how can you handle different states within Tailwind CSS? And when I say different states, I'm meaning things like hover, if an element is active, if an element is checked, maybe even different pseudo elements. So like before placeholder selection or handling different media queries or attributes, how can you kind of handle these different selectors when using Tailwind CSS? Well, that's what you're going to learn in today's video. Now, I created this website. It is available on my GitHub, linked in my description below to where you could clone it, npm run dev, and you should see this website as well. But getting to handling states here, within Tailwind, you can apply classes conditionally by adding a modifier at the beginning of the class specifying the condition. So if you only want to apply a certain Tailwind class when someone is hovering over an element, then you can use a modifier at the beginning of that class. So what does that look like here? Well, if we head to the Tailwind docs here real quick, and we want to go to the hover, focus, and active section of this docs, you can see if you add this modifier here before a certain class, then it's only going to use this class if this modifier is true. So in this instance, if they are hovering over this element, this button element, then they're going to make the background some violet color. Or if it's an active element, they're going to make the background this violet color. Or if it's focused, it's not going to have an outline to it, and so on and so forth. So you can add these different modifiers to adjust the actual styles of an element when it has some state that is occurring. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this hover colon background hyphen violet hyphen 600. I'm going to head back to VS Code here, and I'm going to add that as a class name to my paragraph here that says you can apply Tailwind classes conditionally, yada, yada, yada. So here I'm going to do hover colon background violet. And if you see class name here, that is just a React specific thing. This is technically JSX and not HTML. But if you're working with just HTML, you would use class here, and this would work the same way. So I'm going to add hover, colon, background, violet, 600. And then I'm going to head back to my browser here. And when I hover over this paragraph, you can see it changes the background to this violet color. Now, you can use modifiers for just about anything to mimic regular CSS. However, keep in mind that some pseudo selectors are going to be just a little bit different. So in CSS it's first child, but in Tailwind, it's just first. So there are some differences between the CSS pseudo elements and pseudo selectors relative to Tailwind. But in most instances, whatever you can do in CSS, you can also do in Tailwind. It just might have a bit different of a name. So you might just have to consult the docs to make sure that you are using the correct thing. So let's go over a couple other pseudo classes here. So for pseudo classes, you have, of course, hover, focus, first child, etc. So if I head over to the docs here, you can see that we can handle all these different things. We can add first, last, odd, even, different form states. So required, invalid, disabled. And within these examples here, you can see that you just do disabled colon and then the class you want to apply, invalid colon and then the class that you want to apply focus, colon, and then the class that you want to apply. So very similar to handling the hover states. Now as an example here, let's go and add, how about to all of our odd number paragraphs or our odd number children paragraphs, we will add a background and we'll add a background of white. So let me go ahead and I'm going to add background of white and I'm going to copy this class name and I'm going to paste it to this paragraph here and I'm going to remove this here and i need to make sure to close my tags and then let's copy this class let's add it to this paragraph as well as this one as well as this one this one and this one so for all of the odd paragraphs here you should see that they have a background of white but if they're not odd they should have this background because we added this odd modifier so if we come back to the browser here you see that the odd number paragraphs here they do indeed have the background of white in which the other ones don't. Now I'm going to remove this because this looks particularly ugly here. Now you can also use different pseudo elements for these different modifiers. 
And here you can see that you can do the double colon before, double colon placeholder, double colon selection, so on and so forth. So let's head back here. And for these pseudo elements, maybe we will do, let's do selection here. So if we select some text with the mouse here, let's make it a certain color. And in this case, we'll make it this kind of pink color. So I'm going to go ahead and grab selection text hyphen. I'm not going to even try to pronounce that. So let's go back. We will add class name is equal to selection colon that word right there. And then we close that quotes there. So this will do like if I highlight this within my website, whatever's highlighted, it's going to change it to this color because that is my selected text. So if I come back to my browser here and I select this, you can see it's this purple color. But if I remove this class name here and I highlight it, you see that it's no longer that purple color. It's like, I don't know, this off orange color. So that's one way that you can use pseudo elements within Tailwind. Now you could also use the before content, placeholder content, all that stuff. It's going to work very similarly. Now you can also add media queries and you do that by doing colon SM, colon MD, colon LG. So these are going to be your small, medium, and large breakpoints. And I believe you also have XL, 2XL, and different things like that. And when we cover responsive design, we'll head into media queries a bit more on how to customize those. But just to show you an example this quick, let's actually do, and you can also chain these onto each other. So I can do MD colon hover colon background violet for this. So I'm saying in a medium breakpoint here, then I want you to change this to violet when hovering over this paragraph. So right now, you do indeed see the violet color. But if I inspect and I make this a very small window, and now I hover over it, you don't see it because it's no longer within that medium breakpoint. So it's only going to show this now on larger than medium screens. So here I see it, but now if I shrink it down, I do not see it. So that is how you can do media queries here, but we will cover this more when we get into responsive design. And just so you know I'm not lying to you, if I now remove that, and then I make it a very small screen, you see that you still see it because that medium modifier was only showing this on medium or larger web pages. Now you can also use different attributes. So you can select when it is an open input or something like that, or if it's a checked input or very similar things. So if we head back to the docs and we look at their attribute selectors, we can see that they use an example of this div here and they set are you checked to true. And if checked is true, they want to show this background. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this here and let's just add this right under my attribute selectors. And I'm going to add, this is some text right here. And let me just format this a little bit better. There we go. And now if I come back to my page, I see this is some text and it does have this blue background. But if I remove this aria checked and let me just actually change it to false, what you're going to see is that this no longer gets the blue background here. It actually gets the gray background because it's no longer aria checked. But if I change it back to true, you see it does go back to blue. So you can use these different attribute selectors here or these attribute modifiers to add certain styles when a certain attribute is a certain value. And you could also stack these selectors like I kind of showed you earlier in which if you have a medium breakpoint and you want the hover modifier, then you can just chain those on to each other. So just like I showed you before, if I only want to show this on, let's say large screens, and I only want to show it when I'm hovering over it, then I can do LG colon hover colon and then the class name. And then my example should work very similar to before to where on this large screen, I do indeed see this. If I inspect and I shorten this down, 
And now I hover over it, I do not see it. So you can chain these onto each other with just using back-to-back kind of colons there. So MD colon hover, or it could be like an attribute selector, are you checked equals true colon hover. So when it's checked and they're hovering over it, then you show this and you can just chain them on each other like so. So that is how you can handle different states and tailwind. Hopefully you learned a lot from this video. In my next video, I'm going to cover responsive design. So thanks for tuning into this. And I'll see you in that next one.